In this video, we're going to focus on graphing absolute value functions, and we're going to talk about how to find the axis of symmetry, vertex, the transformations, domain and range, and things like that. So let's say if you have this function, y is equal to the absolute value of x plus 2. How would you graph it using a table first? What you want to do is you want to find the x-coordinate of the vertex. If you set the inside equal to 0, x is going to be 0. So you want to center your table around an x value of 0. Pick two points to the right and two points to the left. If you plug in 0 into the equation, it's going to be 2. This is the coordinates of the vertex, is 0, 2. If you plug in 1, 1 plus 2 is 3. Now, because negative 1 and 1 are equally distant from the vertex, they're going to have the same y value. The absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. 1 plus 1, I mean 1 plus 2 is 3. Now, if you plug in 2, it's 4. If you plug in negative 2, it's also 4. So now, we can graph the equation. So the first point is 0, 2. And then we have 1, 3, negative 1, 3, 2, 4, negative 2, 4. Whenever you have an absolute value expression, typically it forms a V-shape. And so it looks like this. The axis of symmetry is the x-coordinate of the vertex. That's where you have symmetry in the graph. So the axis of symmetry is the equation x is equal to 0. Now, what is the domain and range of the function? For an absolute value function, the domain is going to be all row numbers. As long as you don't have any fractions, no uh, logarithms or square roots, the domain will always be all row numbers. What you have to watch out for is the range. Now for the range, you need to look at the y values from bottom to top. The lowest y value is negative 2. And this graph keeps going up, so the highest y value is infinity. So it's from negative 2 to infinity. Since it includes a negative 2, you need to put a bracket next to the negative 2. Infinity is always associated with uh, parentheses. Let's try another example y is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 1. And let's make a table to graph this one. So to find the x-coordinate of the vertex, set the inside equal to 0. So x is equal to 3. Now let's pick two numbers to the right of 3 and two numbers to the left. So if we plug in 3 into the equation, what is the value of x? 3 minus 3 is 0, plus 1 is 1. Now what if we plug in 4? 4 minus 3 is 1, plus 1 is 2. Now if we plug in 2, it should also be 2, because 2 and 4 are equally distant from the vertex at x equals 3. If you plug in 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, and the absolute value of negative 1 is 1, plus 1, which is 2. If you plug in 5, 5 minus 3 is 2, plus 1, that's 3. If you plug in 1, you should also get 3. 1 minus 3 plus 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. So this symmetry about the vertex. So now let's go ahead and graph the equation. So the first point is that 3, 1, and then we have another one at 4, 2, and 2, 2, and then 5, 3, and 1, 3. So we can see the V-shape. As long as you plot it around the vertex, you're going to get a nice V-shape graph. If you don't, the graph might look strange. So it helps to plot it around the vertex if you're going to use the table. Now, the axis of symmetry is the x-coordinate of the vertex. 
So for the AOS, you could simply write x is equal to 3. Now what about the domain and range for the function? The domain is all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. Now for the range, look at the lowest y value. It's 1. And the highest is infinity since the graph goes in the upward direction. It can keep going up. So the range is from 1 to infinity. Now what about the transformations? If you see x minus 3 on the inside, flip the sign. That means it's going to move 3 units to the right. Now notice that we have a plus 1. This one you don't flip. It's going to go up one. So the graph, it shifts three units to the right and up one unit. The slope of the graph, the number in front of x, is one. So since the slope is one from the vertex, as you go one to the right, it needs to go up one. Slope is rise over run. Now it's important to know this because you can graph without making a table. You can graph using transformations, which is what we're going to do in the next example. Let's try this one. Feel free to pause the video and graph this particular problem. So what is the vertex? Notice that it shifts two units to the left. If you see a plus two, change it to minus two. You can also set the inside equal to zero. So if you subtract both sides by two, the x coordinate of the vertex is negative two. So it shifts horizontally two units to the left. And we have a negative three on the outside, so it's going to shift vertically down three units. So the coordinates of the vertex is negative two, negative three which is somewhere over here. Now the number in front of x is 1. So to find the next point, we just need to, as we travel one unit to the right, we need to go up one, since the slope is 1. The slope is rise over 1. 1 is the same as 1 over 1. And as we go 1 to the right, up 1 again. Same thing for the left side. As you go 1 to the left, up 1. We need the v-shape. So it's going to look like this. The axis of symmetry is x is equal to negative 2. The domain is all real numbers. Now, what do you think the range of the function is going to be for this example? What is the lowest y value? The lowest y value is negative 3. And the highest, because it opens upward, is positive infinity. So the range is from negative 3 to infinity. Now, what about this one? y is equal to or greater than negative 2 absolute value x minus 1 plus 4. So now we have some inequalities in the mix. How can we graph it? So let's do what we've been doing. So what is the coordinate of the vertex? So notice that we have a negative 1 on the inside. So it's going to be positive 1. And then notice that it shifts 4 units up. So the vertex is 1, 4. If you plug in 1 into the equation, 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 times the negative 2 is still 0. Plus 4, you get 4. So the first point is at 1, 4. Now notice that the slope is 2, and also there's a negative sign. Because of the negative, it's going to go down instead of opening in the upward direction. So the slope is negative 2, which is the same as negative 2 over 1. That means the rise is negative 2, and the run is 1. So as we run or travel one unit to the right, the graph is going to go down two units. So from 1, 4, it's now going to be at 2, 2. And if we go one to the left, it's also going to go down two units. Now, if we go one more to the right, we need to go down two units. So one to the right, down two. And one to the left, down two. 
So now we can continue it. We can get the next point, which should be somewhere over here, and another one in this region. And now we can make the graph. By the way, before I graph it, notice that we have an inequality. Do we need a solid line or a dashed line? Notice the underline. Since y is greater than or equal to, we need to use a solid line. If it was just greater than but not equal to, we would then use a dashed line. So if you see the underline next to the inequality, use a solid line. Now because we have an inequality, we need to shade the appropriate region because there's more than one answer. Should we shade around the absolute value or on the inside? Notice that y is greater than the function or equal to it. Because it's greater than, that tells us that we need to shade on the outside. Now there's another way in which you can check it. So let's say if we choose a point anywhere in this graph. If the equation is true, you should shade in a region that contains that point. If it's not true, don't shade in that region, shade in the other region. So let's choose 0, 0. So if the equation is true, that means we should shade within the absolute value. We should shade in this region. If the equation is not true, we should not shade there. Rather, we should shade in the area outside of it, which is what we shaded already. So let's plug in 0, 0. 0 for x, 0 for y. So 0 is greater than or equal to negative 2, 0 minus 1, plus 4. So the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. 2 times positive 1 is negative 2, and negative 2 plus 4 is 2. So true or false, is 0 equal to or greater than 2? This is false. 0 is less than 2. That means that we should not shade in this region, which means we should shade in the other region. So therefore, this region is correct. And so that's how you can graph an absolute value equation with an inequality. Try this one y is less than 1 over 3 absolute value x plus 1 minus 2. So go ahead, take a minute, and pause the video. See if you can get the answer for this one. So what are the coordinates of the vertex? So it's going to be negative 1, don't forget to change the sign on the inside, and negative 2, don't change the sign on the outside. So let's plot that first, negative 1, negative 2, that should be 1 to the left, down 2. So that's the first point. Now notice that the slope is 1 over 3. The rise is associated with the 1, the number on top, the run is associated with 3. So we need to go up 1 and over 3. So that should take us to the point 2, negative 1. And if we go up 1 over 3 again, that should take us to 5, 0. Now to the left, we need to go up 1 over 3. Since it's positive 1 third, that means the graph opens upward as opposed to uh, downward. So the next point should be at we're at negative 1 on the x-axis, so we should be at negative 4, negative 1. And then up 1 over 3, negative 7, 0. So the graph should look like this. By the way, do we need a solid line or a dashed line? Since we don't have the underline, we need a dashed line. Now where should we shade? Above the graph or below? Since y is less than the function, we should shade below. Now let's prove it. Let's pick the point 0, 0. 
If it's true, we should shade in this region. If it's false, then we should shade below the graph in the region that doesn't contain the point zero, zero. So zero is less than one third times absolute value zero plus one minus two. Zero plus one is one, and the absolute value of one is one. Times one third, that's gonna be one third. One third minus two. One third is like 0.33 minus two, that's negative 1.67. Zero is not less than negative 1.67. On a number line, zero is to the right of negative 1.67. So zero has a larger value, or is greater than negative 1.67, according to the number line. So therefore, this is a false statement. Zero is greater than a negative number. So we do have the right answer. We shade it in the correct region. So you can use any of those two techniques to determine which region you should shade. Now this is going to be the last example for the day. So feel free to pause the video and work this example. See if you can get the answer. Go ahead and graph it. So we need to find the vertex first. And look at the inside of the absolute value. It's not as easy to see what it's going to be. But you can solve it. Set the inside equal to 0 and solve for x. If we add 6 to both sides, we're going to get 3 over 2x equals to 6. Now let's multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction on the left. The 2's are going to cancel. And so on the left side, we're left with 3x. 6 times 2 on the right is 12. If we divide both sides by 3, the x-coordinate of the vertex is 4. So it's going to shift right 4, and we have a 4 on the outside, so it's up 4 as well. So we have the point 4, comma 4. Now how can we find the next point? How can we use the slope to do that? The first thing we need to realize is that there's a negative outside of the absolute value. So it's going to go in a downward direction. The second thing to realize is that in front of x, we have 3 over 2. So that's the slope. So because we have the negative on the outside and the 3 over 2 x, or the 3 over 2 in front of x, the rise is negative 3. It's going to go down 3 units, and the run is 2. So as we go 2 units to the right, it's going to go down 3. Currently, we're at an x value of 4. Traveling 2 units to the right will take us to an x value of 6, and going down 3, the y value will be 1. So the next point is at 6, 1. So if we repeat the process from 6 going 2 units to the right, that's going to take us to 8. And then down 3 from 1 is going to take us to negative 2. So the next point is 8, negative 2. Now starting back at 4, 4, if we go 2 to the left, the x value will change from 4 to negative 2. And down 3, it's going to take us to 2, comma 1. 2 to the left, the x value will be 0. Down 3 from 1, the y value will be negative 2. Now we don't have an underline, so we need to use a dashed line. So that's how you can graph it using transformations. Now we need to find the appropriate region to shade. Since y is greater than the function, we're going to shade above it. This technique works if you get y by itself, typically on the left side.